There's a reason why so many motivational speakers use sports as a metaphor for life. Because there are so many parallels that we can draw from the field and the real life. Hard work and character and commitment, determination, discipline and team spirit. Each of these are needed on the field. Each of these are needed in life. And while the objective of the game, you know, could be to win, the purpose of the team is to become who you were meant to be. And so it is with our Christian life. We are meant to become who God has created us to be. Jesus said in the gospel, you will do greater things than I. You and I, my dear friends, are called for greatness. And because we are created for greatness, regardless of where we find ourselves in life, even in a place of failure, we are drawn to these stories of sportsmanship these stories of courage, these stories of people rising above their challenges, overcoming their obstacles. We are inspired by people who swim against the tide, who serve with passion, who do the hard work at great cost, who practice, who discipline in order to get to their greatness. We love these stories, we love these people, because deep within us, we are hardwired for this greatness. And what is greatness, you may ask? You know, is it some status? Is it some wealth, some power, some popularity? In this generation, we have our own idea of greatness. There is temptation to want to be great only in terms of great GPA scores or a spot-free skin maybe, a perfect body image, X number of followers. There's temptation today to rise to the top at the cost of bringing others down. There's temptation today to be lured into quick fixes, short-term solutions, temporary pleasures. And somewhere down the line, in the pursuit of this kind of greatness, we lose sight of the greatness within us. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, You are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. It was Pope Benedict XVI who says, The world offers you comfort. But you are not made for this comfort. You are not made for the mediocre and the ordinary. You are made for greatness. You are not made to settle. You are not made to compromise. You are not made for the small wins. You are made for lasting change. You are made for legacy. And so if you're not careful, brothers and sisters, if you're not careful to fuel and foster who we really are, this love affair that we have with the world, this love affair that we have with this culture of comfort is going to seep into our spiritual lives. We will settle. We will compromise. We will want the quick fixes. We will not want to wait on the promises of God. We will not want to do the hard work of holiness and virtue. We will not want to serve others beyond ourselves. We will only want therapeutic Christianity. But the truth is, Christianity is not therapy. Christianity is a relationship with a living God who gives us power to be in this world, but not of this world. And this power is not reserved only for a select few. By the virtue of your baptism, by the virtue of your confirmation, you and I, you and I have everything we need to become everything we ought to be so that we can go forth. And as St. Catherine of Siena says, go forth and change this world. Go set this world on fire. By the virtue of our sacraments, we can live the resurrection power of Easter all the days of our life. By the virtue of our sacraments, you and I have the power to change, to change the world, this change that we desperately need in this world. By the virtue of our sacraments, you and I, my dear friends, are called to become saints, nothing less than saints. And so sainthood is not some award that we give to people who do more than us. Saints were not supermen. Saints are not perfect. Saints are ordinary people with courage. Not courage of themselves. Courage from on high. Courage from the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that you and I have received at our baptism and confirmation. And so in the most ordinary moment of your life, whether as a student or a spouse, as a sibling, as a friend, as a parent, as a child, you can live in the resurrection power simply by saying yes. Yes to excellence, yes to virtue, yes to greatness. You see, excellence, virtue, greatness is a choice. 
and it's a choice we make every single day of our lives. Mary said yes and we have salvation history. Peter said yes and we have the legacy of the church. The saints said yes and the courses of nations were changed. How is your yes going to impact a world around you? God is waiting for your yes because the world needs your yes. And I believe that the Lord is inviting us to look within, to see the greatness within, His image within us, and that imprint that He has placed on our soul that is marked with the words, you are made for more, you are made for greatness. And my prayer is that wherever you are today, that you will make the choice to arise to your greatness, brothers and sisters. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel to receive notifications on many such insightful videos. And together, together let us arise. Let us arise to our greatness and bring many more who are longing, longing to hear the good news of the gospel. God bless.